I am extremely happy uh, to be here to uh, formally introduce uh, Rohit, um, recipient of uh, 2023 H.H. Mathur Award for Excellence in Applied Science. Actually, I am not at all surprised that Rohit got this award. In fact, I am surprised that it took so many years <laughs> for him to get this. He should have gotten sooner. Um, from the time Rohit joined, I have seen him, how he went about setting up his lab, establishing the you know, research group and how he has contributed to nation building in uh, various different ways. Um, he has guided nearly 40 plus um, PhD students, probably 42 or 43 completed now, and many more master's students. And this is his contribution to human resource development. He has filed close to 200 patent applications. Most of them have been granted and the rest will sure be granted in due course of time. And this is a contribution to the IP landscape of the country. And um, he has mentored several young entrepreneurs. Now he himself has taken plunge and co-founded three new startups. And this is uh, Roy's contribution towards uh, Atmanirbhar India. Currently, he is also overseeing the Medic you know, Biodesign uh, Fellowship Program. This program aims to train 50 fellows over a period of five years and get at least at least 25 innovative products. This is actually phenomenal. 12 fellows are already on board and have begun to you know, uh, work. In addition to this uh, you know, product-related work, Rohit also publishes a very large number of research articles, original research articles in uh, peer-reviewed uh, journals of uh, repute in the respective areas. Um, Rohit has actually set the bar very high for all other faculty members um, and uh, um, what he has achieved to me is really, really uh, very impressive. I keep saying this in every forum and every occasion that I get. Besides this research work, he teaches two courses and uh, we have to every time put a limit on the number of registrations. Nearly 400 to 450 students register these courses year after year. That shows the importance. And besides this, the third part is the administrative work. He, whatever work is given to him, administrative work, he does that at the department level, at the national, you know, institute level. And of course, he's in the innumerable committees at the national level. And uh, these are also very important contributions to the country. Um, and not surprisingly, Rohit is a recipient of very many awards. And one of them is the Shanti Sarup Matnagar Award for the year 2021. He's a member of you know, science academies. And one interesting thing is that probably he's the only engineer to be a member of the International Medical Association. Okay, all others are medical doctors. And uh, it just shows the spread and reach of his work. So overall, his contributions are you know, quite immense. And the department is very proud of him. I have deliberately not mentioned the specific contributions he has made. That we will get to hear from him now. So congrats, Rogit, uh, once again, and over to you now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Balaji, for the kind introduction. Before I begin this uh, presentation, let me first of all thank um, Professor Bellare for nominating me, Professor Balaji for forwarding the nomination, the Dean r and the Associate Dean for processing uh, it through a committee, and finally the Director for approving it. So let me first of all thank IIT Bombay. This is what I do at all forums, because without IIT Bombay, I am nothing. And it is because of IIT Bombay that today I can talk about so many things that have come out of our lab and continue making impact uh, in the country. We are uh, going to show you plans for the future from what has come out of our lab. So I'm going to talk about affordable healthcare technologies for India today. And as part of this 20-25 um, minute lecture, I'm going to go through uh, the technologies that have been developed in our lab and just give an overview of them. Any details, please feel free to contact us. Plus, we have our own website. And each of the startup, startups have their website to tell you more about the products. What I do say to everybody sitting here is our ecosystem is, is Tremendous. It is superb ecosystem, and I keep telling this at every forum I go through. If we did not have these science, um, you know, departments and colleagues, if we did not have our engineering departments and colleagues, we would not be able to make such an impact. What is also crucial is that we have the the you know the Indian Industrial Research Cons Consultancy Center, which is the Dean R and D's office, which. Uh, let's us take innovations forward, either ourselves or in collaboration with a company. We have a beautiful model of entrepreneurship training in this institute, and we also have our own incubator and now our own research park. 
what we plan is to use all this in each one of the work that I'm going to show you, and you'll see how the impact has, has come out. What is equally important to understand is that after you do all this, whether you're able to reach the market, and that is exactly what we start out thinking when we start doing any project. We have been able to do many things in the past. If you see that circle there, many of this has gone on to make an impact. Every award that I have got is because of the work done by the students. So I don't claim ownership to any one of this. I say that I am only representing your work. What is important is that about 12 years back, when we started doing this, uh, I thought I'll do it differently. I thought I will not go the same route as people do in most institutes as they publish papers and move forward in their career. I said I'm going to take patents as my output from the lab. So if we have been able to file 200 patents, that means we have been able to do 200 different projects over the last 15 years. And one of the important thing is that when you start doing a project, it should lead to the market. If it stays in your lab, then it has not made an impact. It has just been able to uh, show a proof of concept, a prototype even, but then it has not reached the market and done any big thing in the market. The one in the center here was our first product. 2011, we conceived this product, which is using mobile phone diagnostics, can we replace what Siemens can do using their Clinitech systems. And we were able to successfully do that, as you will see shortly. But the first product coming out of IIT Bombay, and this was an MTech project for Abhishek Sen, who started out in our lab, set up his company called Biosense Technologies, and then went on to make this product a reality. What was important at that stage was that CDSEO or DCGI did not have clear guidelines for the use of mobile phone to be used as diagnostics. This made the path clear. This was the first example of a mobile phone-based diagnostics in this country in 2011. After that, many, many such products. But that led to the second product, which you see on the right-hand side of your screen, which is SYNC, our own glucometer. And we were called by the, by the government of India, set up, you know, they set up a committee and they said, we want to make our own glucometer and our strips, which cost less than two rupees to the Indian population. At that point, each strip was costing about 18 to 30 rupees. Even today, we are not able to break that nexus. It is extremely difficult because these are players who can manufacture at less than 50 paise, and they can bring prices down to one rupee in order to move you out of the market. So the glucometer, again, was launched in 2014 in a very big function in New Delhi, but we couldn't make that big an impact. We could sell, we could actually, um, make it at less than one rupee 10 paise per strip, but we couldn't sell at less than five rupee per strip for these uh, strips that you see there. The Touch B was Biosense's own product, but we actually did a lot of innovations in that to be able to make that device as accurate as your standard blood test. So, you know, finally they could get it within plus minus 0.5 gram per deciliter, which is actually as good as a, a diagnostic tool. Please remember, when you start doing a project, the first thing you do is do a marketry survey. This is what we are struggling to do even today. Even today, when you start a project, the first thing you should be doing is a market survey. This is what we did way back in 2010, where we actually surveyed 50 labs, pathology labs, in and around Mumbai, Navi Mumbai, Thane. We found what they were working on. We found what tests they were doing day in, day out, and how many of these they were doing day in, day out. Once you have that number, it becomes easy for you to put a, you know, a ballpark figure of where your product would fit. How many of the strips that you make could be sold to these path labs? Remember, you're not targeting large hospitals when you're doing point of care diagnostics. Your market is these small path labs, the clinics, the you know, tier two, tier three cities, and that's what we had targeted right in the beginning. You should target not just the instrument, but also the strips, which is your consumable, which keeps making you money over the years as you go along. So the first product, when it came out in the market, uh, Siemens uh, was really surprised seeing this product because it could do exactly what your Clinitech machines could do, and in fact, as good as what they could do. So that's the you know, layman term of, of saying it. But these 10 parameter urine dipsticks actually made a difference in this country. They were able to sell these. Uh, in the first year itself, they had sales you know, going over 2 CR. Today, Biosense makes 150 CR of business every year using those three products that I showed you. But today, they are part of a much larger company is why uh, they don't show it as their own sales, but as part of Perkin Elmer. 
course, you can look up what these urine dipsticks are. What was crucial for us was to not just do the 10 parameter, but to do the 10 plus 2 parameter, which is albumin and creatinine. Once we could make these strips in our own assembly line or do it as OEM, we were able to now start packaging and selling them in the market. We've, over the years, we've shifted focus. We've not just been in point of care diagnostics. Now we have uh, started working in pain management. We've also started working in smart wound dressing materials. In IoT-based medical solutions, I'm going to show you some of those as well. In microfluidics, lateral flow assays. In maternal health, which is again a very big area of research in our lab. And of course, the point of care device remains a big focus area. <coughs> What really happened is over the last 10 years or so, I have been helping at least 20 to 25 uh, student entrepreneurs through my lab. They have gone on to become successful, maybe even folded up. But then we decided last year that we'll set up our own companies. And these are snapshots of these startups that I have set up. So just to give you an idea of what is possible uh, using the ecosystem that I just described. The first one is EffectMed Private Limited. This is with Professor Bellare and Kunal who's a, uh, you know, a student with Professor Bellare, and one of my students, Ajay Suryavanshi, was also part of this. What we wanted to do was take two products, one from Professor Bellare's lab, one from our lab, and put it into this startup and start raising money. Once we were confident of the product, we could raise money. And today, the company has been able to raise about a million dollars. And this is, of course, in Indian rupees, but a pharma company has put about 8 CR into this company, valuing the company at about 30, 35 CR. But what is important is that we are very close to clinical, finishing clinical trials for the first product that you see there, which is the bone graft. The second one is moving ahead. This is a patent filed by ICMR in not just India, but US, Europe, Japan, and many other countries. You know, ICMR has been really helpful with this technology, which is our resorbable screw material, because they feel that there is tremendous potential of using this material in developing countries. And once we are able to protect, protect this technology in these countries, now we are ready to move forward <laughs> into making this product. Of course, when you make a company, please remember you have to have not just your business advisors, but also your financial advisors, because they are going to add value to your company. So you have to also think about you know, such people coming on board in your company. The second company that I set up is called AutoSense. Now, this is a, a beautiful example of an institute postdoctoral fellow working in my lab uh, Dr. Vinay Patel, who actually transitioned from doing academic research to you know, translational work. Uh, of course, he'd been doing that while he was doing his PhD, but this is a passion for him. And unless you can find such people who are passionate about setting up startups, of actually going through the whole process, it becomes extremely difficult for you to actually maintain that momentum. This uh, uh, company was set up with one product in mind which is the glycated albumin assay and device, which was funded by WRCB. So this is the second stage of using internal IIT Bombay funds in to set up a company and then getting external money for that. We were able to successfully get a BIG grant, which is about 50 lakh. But then we were also able to get uh, IOE funding for another product, which is coming through the same company, which is called CKD Sense. Now, important thing to understand here is when you set up a company, you don't rely on one product into that company. So this is our model. We will typically have multiple such products into a startup, and we'll have a revenue stream coming in from each one of these products over the years that you see your startup grow. This is uh, doing a creatinine, urea, and uric acid at point of care. So this is again going to sit in tier two, tier three cities, supposedly have a huge market there, but then that is something that needs to be tested. The third company we set up is called Medinotech. And this is, again, a, a PhD student in my lab, Vaishali Pawar, who went on to do a postdoc, went on to do uh, you know, industry work, and then came back into my lab to set up a startup on pain management. So our goal was to take her PhD work forward into this startup, make sure that there is a niche market for it, and which is what you see here, because this is using these sponges which are drug loaded for prevention and treatment of orthopedic implant associated infection. It's a huge area of research in the world right now. And if you can have a solution for this, which can first target pain for, for the first three to five days and then target infection over the next three weeks, you've actually got a, a beautiful product to move forward. We also have our own micro needles. This is something that we've been working on for a long, long time now. And today we are confident that we can make any size and any you know, material microneedle 
depending on the mold that we use. We've, we've kind of uh, finalized that process. The GMP facility coming up in our department will be used to create these micro needles, which will then go into clinical trials subsequently through this company. So our goal is to now raise money for this startup and then take it forward from there. Of course, we will have multiple products in these startups. We are also looking at an intra-articular gel for, uh, for pain management. This is going to be a, uh, an area you know, which is going to develop further. The fourth one is the Life Seed Reproductive Healthcare Private Limited. This is with another postdoc in my lab, and I'm really proud of these guys, that they have actually left their aspirations for going into the academia after doing a postdoc in this lab, being able to file multiple patents, multiple publications over the last two, two and a half years. Priyanka Maske is an example, who came in from NIRRH with a bio background, and she transitioned into doing complete translational uh, uh, stuff. So she's been uh, uh, instrumental in setting up this startup, which will look at fertility management. This is a big area, again, for this country. Very few startups. I sit on the BIRAC panel, and I, for uh, uh, you know, a point, know that there are only two other startups in this country in this area. So we are supposed to be in a niche area, maybe you know, with what we have products in mind. I'm not going to go through the products, but what we have in mind, we should be able to make an impact in these. The fifth one is clinicosis. Now, this is the one that we are most uh, sort of upbeat about because this is digital health. We've received some funding from uh, Gettinge in the past, which was through a CSR funding to IIT Bombay. Gettinge uh, tried, Gettinge is a really large uh, uh, company based out of Europe, which makes these uh, uh, you know, uh, respiratory devices, uh, you can say. So they set up a business in India. They are actually doing a lot of work in India. But their uh, problem statement was they wanted to make a remote ICU monitoring system. They went to many places in Europe, went to several places, spent money, couldn't get it done, came to IIT Bombay. We did it in one year. Now, the solution we have is, of course, a joint patent held between IIT Bombay and Gettinge with first right of refusal lying with you know, Gettinge India. But what we have discussed with them is that they now push this product through their company, but then fund Clinicosis as part of their work. So we have put a budget of about um, you know, $250,000 to them in order to take this product forward. So our goal is to make these remote healthcare monitoring devices. And we have several products which fall under this, at least five uh, products which are ready to move into this uh, portfolio. The first one we are starting with is this routine monitoring of IV fluid flow, which is actually a very simple problem statement, but no simple solution exists in this country. You have these bulky uh, IV fluid monitoring systems, which are so difficult to use, which are so expensive that you cannot even put them on bedside. Our goal is to have each and every bed in this country have one of our remote health you know, IV fluid monitoring system attached to the bed. And this is going to cost less than I would say less than 10 rupees, but that's up to the market to decide you know, what it would really cost. So the goal is to uh, create such systems. The sixth one that I have in mind, and I've already sent a letter to the, to the dean's office some time back, uh, is uh, LFSMs. The idea is to take all the lateral flow assay devices that we are doing in our, in our lab and club them under this one company. And this would then be led by a student in my lab who's just uh, graduating. She submitted her thesis, and she would then take the lateral flow assays forward. We have already tested the thyroid markers uh, in a hospital, and we have, get, we have been getting ex excellent results with her data. So we hope that we would be able to take these forward. Troponin INT, there is huge interest from, again, the industry to make assays which are as good as the Roche strips out there. We've done several tech transfers, again, in the past, thanks to the dean's office, in order to you know, facilitate all these tech transfers. The, the, Two that we did to Yashraj Biotechnology Limited are for uh, using the micro needles in conjunction with a drug delivery system in order to create these multifunctional uh, you know, wound dressing materials, which would, in fact, be superior to the ones available in the market. And the second one would be to use uh, these uh, drug-loaded uh, gel foam material, which could be used in, uh, man for management of post-surgical complications in oral and maxillofacial surgeries. This one has Dr. VP Soni as a co-investigator on this uh, project, because this problem statement came from Dr. VP Soni, who is a maxillofacial surgeon, who is an adjunct professor in our own department. And this helps us get medical needs from the clinicians, which can then be translated to an actual product. 
We've also transferred this technology. They're just starting to manufacture this this year, so hopefully the royalties will start coming in next year. But we were able to put a feeding port in the non-invasive ventilation mask. This is a huge problem statement, again, coming from the, uh, you know, the military hospitals. And we were able to do this, transfer this technology to Morpheus Private Limited, again, facilitated by the dean's office. And once we were able to do that, uh, the idea is that for every mask they sell, they're going to give a certain amount of money back to IIT Bombay. So this was not on profits. This was not on uh, net sales or anything. It was based on per mask sale. So if, assuming they are able to sell about a 1 lakh pieces of mask every year, you know, about 10 lakh rupees or, you know, 20 lakh rupees will come back to IIT Bombay. Uh, the, the, the lipid assay is the one that was initially uh, transferred to <laughs> Dynasense Technologies through which we submitted a BIRAC CRS grant. This is near completion. You can now see results. You can see total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, and triglycerides. One and only device in the market that can do all of this using one drop of blood. Uh, we've just finished testing at Cyan Hospital. The data looks excellent, less than 10% variability. With this data, now we should be able to get our manufacturing license. We've already got the test license, and we are doing all the trials under the test license. So there is a lot of work. I'm not going to go through all this uh, in order that we have some time for questions. But uh, remember, when you do a project, you can tap into the government sources initially, which is what uh, you know we are very uh, uh, familiar with, because there are a lot of these government schemes out there. But once you've done that initial um, you know, uh, fundraising for the government, it's time to start looking at private sources. Only then you will have confident in confidence in your product is because Unless you can tell them that there is a market for it, nobody will really put money into it. So went through a lot of iterations, as you can see, see through Dynason's uh, work. This is three years of work which went through not just a, a, a actual validation, but a academic clinical validation at KEM Hospital initially, and then now at Cyan Hospital uh, Mumbai. So both of these uh, devices, this device and the strips, would make a really big uh, sort of uh, a product for the company because this would be the first product moving into Autosense. Uh, we are getting a loan license from Dynasense in order to do that. Uh, we've set up manufacturing at the company site uh, of Dynasense and we are able to make these strips now at their site and make the devices. We've also made the, like I said, you know, lateral flow assay should not be far behind. This is a technology that has been in the world for a very long time. Very recently, people started thinking that can't we use the intensity of these two lines? You see these two lines. Uh, maybe the second one is not very clear, but can you look at the intensity of these two lines to actually measure the analyte and give quantitative values to the analyte? We've made a reader with the help of Betic at IIT Bombay, and uh, we've now been able to quantify the data and show that the data looks good in order to be able to now get a test license for this product. A lot of student startups, you know, I'm going to just show them to you so that, you know, you are aware that a lot of this work happens at IIT Bombay. A lot of these students who have been associated with our lab are still associated with my lab. I see Vinay Saini sitting here, you know, he was a postdoc in IIT Bombay, set up his company, and now is successfully running his company. Care Mother came out of Shantanu Fatak's uh, work, who's a PhD graduate from my lab. This has now impacted more than 1.5 million women in this country. So look at the numbers there. If you make a product which has the capability to affect millions of people, not just this country, but many developing countries, then you've made a product that you should be proud of. And IIT Bombay is really proud of such uh, students who have been able to take these technologies. Neodox is the most recent example of a company out of our lab. Uh, they still work in our lab. And most of their assays, they're testing out in our lab. Uh, Anurag Meena set up this company with two other IIT Bombay graduates, engineering physics, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering. Three students came together, set up this company. Within one year, they were valued at 125 crores. This round, possibly another you know, 600, 700 crore valuation. Kavach, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm helping these guys out. They are also doing lateral flow assays. And they are uh, being able to make a really big impact in this space. Nordetect is a company based out of Norway, Denmark, Denmark, and this is a, uh, an intern who's, who worked in my lab, went on to set up a company. This is for soil health monitoring. We are helping her get funding in India because this is a difficult country to get money, uh, in, at least in agriculture, because you have to show field trials, and that's not a very easy thing. Uh, Vinay's company I just mentioned, he's, he's running this Austic Pharma out of Sain. 
and this is doing really well. You know, I'm really proud of the way Vinay has has uh, taken this company forward. A lot of products out of the company, many many approved uh, products which are actually selling in the market. We've been recognized by many many people. You know, and I really thank IIT Bombay and uh, you know the entire ecosystem for helping us get here. Most importantly, we do a lot of outreach. Please remember, if your lab does well, and if you can make products, you should be more than willing to show it to people and show it and, and open your lab up to interns. Every year, even today, our lab takes in 50 interns a year. You know, I don't know where they sit, I don't know where they work, but they do work. They do uh, you know, get into Columbia, into Harvard, into MIT, after they work from IIT Bombay, and they continue making impacts, which is what is crucial. We have a huge network. You know, Indian Navy is our biggest partner because of Arnab Ghosh coming to do a PhD at IIT Bombay. More than 50 IPs filed with Arnab in the last three years. And many of these people are still associated with us. Many, many uh, industry interactions. We, we continue getting many requests from industry to do work. We are not able to do uh, as many of them as, uh, as we would like to. But hopefully, with uh, the plans that I have in mind, we'll probably be able to do many, many more of this industry interactions. As mentioned, we've set up a Medic Biodesign Fellowship. I see many of my Medic Fellows in the audience, and I'm proud of them because you know many of these are clinicians, are doctors who have come to do a, a Biodesign Fellowship. They're practicing cl clinicians in their own hospitals, uh, you know, big uh, areas of research for them, but they're looking at medical needs filtering those medical needs, and finally working on a prototype. We should have these medic fellows present their products to the Department of Biotechnology in about four to six months from now. But that is a milestone that will be cherished by uh, us at IIT Bombay. So this, would, this is a 12-month fellowship program, as Professor Balaji mentioned. Uh, important thing is uh, we will train over 50 fellows uh, through this program. We are the only institute which has taken up this challenge of training 10 fellows per year. Every other institute in the country, they train 10 fellows over two years. So we are actually double that number, and we are hoping we'll make an impact. You see the numbers, we are hoping we'll get there. Um, before I stop, let me give you these numbers. Important thing is, I still train interns. I still get a lot of staff. I still take a lot of students. I've stopped taking PhD students now. But uh, uh, hopefully, in next two months, Professor Balaji will finish our 50th PhD student. And once that is done, then the milestone is completed for me. I can move on. My idea is to do what Rahul did and uh, take that risk, take that plunge, so that your startup becomes a billion dollar startup in the healthcare space in the next three years from IIT Bombay. And that's the goal I want to live with. But most importantly, I want to affect you know, actually be able to take these technologies and impact people in this country. Not just this country, Africa. We have two fellows from Africa in our lab. We'll use their uh, expertise to take our products to Africa. We'll take Vinay's expertise to take them to South America, and so on and so forth. So the market is open for us. Global is where we need to go. And if we do it good on a national level, we will be recognized on a global level. We still have a huge number of people working in our lab. As you can see, I have many of my interns, students, and, and postdocs working with me. Dr. Swaroop uh, came to inaugurate this Medic Fellowship. And she was really proud to see how uh, the Institute is helping labs like ours to grow. And this is something that is going to be crucial going forward. Let me thank my mentors. I never forget to thank them, because without them, I am nothing. So IIT Bombay sign is on the top there. Uh, Bayrak is on the top there, but then the mentors are right there in the middle. Professor Padmanavan, Professor Manju Sharma, and Dr. Renu Sarup. Each one of them, I owe uh, whatever I have done in my career. Even today, they continue nominating me for prizes, for awards, for you know what, wherever they see fit that they think I can make an impact. So thank you to all my faculty colleagues uh, in the department, all my students who I owe everything to, all my clinical collaborators, the startups that I have worked with, the startups that I continue working with, and IIT Bombay. Thank you very much. Thank you.